And here we are, gang. Uh, 2020 Mercedes AMG C63S Coupe. That's a mouthful, but this car is a handful. So this isn't going to be like a car review. I've only had the car for four days total as I'm filming this. So I think we're just going to do kind of an overview and hit some of the highlights because there's a lot still that I'm sort of trying to figure out, especially with this infotainment system. It's a lot different than what I'm used to. Um, I'm coming off an Audi where it's all touchscreen and really intuitive, and this one isn't quite so intuitive. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just stuff that I need to play around with and get used to. The car so far has been amazing. Um, and really quick, a lot of you guys watched the last video and I asked you to guess what car I was gonna get because I showed it in the video. Here's a little clip that I show of it sort of going by, but one person, exactly one person guessed it right. A lot of people were Porsche, Corvette, Audi R8, which is cool. This car is underneath those in terms of price. I do like Porsche, I do like the new Corvette. Those are amazing cars. But for now, this is doing just, just perfectly. So we've got a four liter twin turbo V8 that cranks out 503 horsepower and 516 foot pounds of torque, nine speed multi-clutch automatic, paddle shifters, race mode. This thing is absolutely crazy. And the sound is unbelievable. As you know, if you saw my uh, previous video, I drove to Scottsdale to get this thing. I will say, once I sort of started looking at, you know, this particular car, they're hard to find. There's not that many for sale. I, and I ended up doing like a nationwide search because within a few hundred miles of Southern California where I live, there's only a few of them. I was gonna go up to Seattle. Seattle Mercedes-Benz of Seattle had a white one. It didn't have the exact spec that I wanted, and truth be told, they weren't being, <laughs> they weren't on it. They just weren't, they could kind of like, they couldn't care less if I was interested in this car. So just based on that, it sort of turned me off. There was another one, kind of a lighter silver version of this same car in Santa Barbara. That was my next contender, but it wasn't as, as optioned as this car was. Uh, this car has carbon steering wheel. It has the air-conditioned seats, but this one it pretty much has all the options I think there's like a carbon fiber accessory Aero package that just that it doesn't have but this has the night package It's got all the carbon stuff in here carbon on the wheel But it, what it doesn't have is the sport seats I'll put a picture on the screen right now showing the sport seats, but from what what I understand, those seats aren't very comfortable. They look absolutely killer. I would love to have those seats, but I think how I drive the car and just use it as sort of a daily driver, I think these seats are fine. I mean, come on. I think the interior looks fantastic. So in 2020, the C63 went through a facelift. It's got a new grill. It's got the new infotainment. It's got a new steering wheel. It's got a new uh, digital dashboard right here in front of me and a couple other cosmetic tweaks on the exterior. But what do you think of the steering wheel? It's sort of got that sort of steampunk sort of design. I like it a lot. I think it looks amazing. It's also got these screens on the steering wheel. And when you tap the screen, it brings up these different modes. I'm driving, but I'll get some still shots so you guys can see uh, what I'm talking about. But what I do like about this is the individual drive mode. So you can put it, of course, in sport mode and sport plus and race and comfort and snow. You can do all of that with the turn of this wheel or you can also do it down here um, in the center stack. But what I do like is the ability to customize your drive settings. So basically what I've got it in is sport plus mode, pretty much everything sport plus except for suspension. I've got my suspension in comfort, but even in comfort mode, it's still fairly stiff. So 
I really like it in just cruising around town. It's the perfect mode. Now there's still a few things that I want to do to the car. First is PPF. I want to do the paint protection film um, all the way around the entire car. I got it. I got one estimate. I still need to get a few others. I don't know that I want to do the whole car right now. I might just do the front half. What's interesting about this paint, even though it looks matte black, it's not technically dark gray. It's a matte gray. But with this paint, if you get like a scratch or something, you can't just buff it out from what I understand. So it's kind of important to me right now to get that done as soon as possible because right now the front end has a couple little chips in it, rock chips, but for the most part, it's in really good shape. So I do want to have that done as soon as I can. And now a lot of you guys know that, you know, I, I was renting a few cars, trying to figure out kind of what I wanted. And I was looking at the Porsche 911, the new Corvette, the Audi R8. And the more that I spent time in those cars, the more I sort of felt like practicality needs to be considered more than I was considering it. For example, you know, the R8 has virtually no storage. The Corvette has more storage, but no back seat. And I don't know why I was so hung up on practicality and having a back seat uh, because the 911 was sort of checking all of my boxes, right? That had, that had a little more storage capability, a little more practicality. Um, but I was just, I don't know. I just, I felt like as my daily driver, my only car, I wanted something that checked most of all my boxes, right? And this one kind of did that. Um, the back seat exists, but it's very, very small. I mean, you're only going to put a little kid back there for maybe a short period of time because just like the Porsche 911, the back seat's there, but it's really, it's just for putting like duffel bags and stuff. But also something that was, that sort of scratched my itch for performance. You guys know I race cars for a long time and performance is kind of a big deal to me. It's important to me. And this car being 500 horsepower and sounding like an absolute beast, checked, definitely scratched that itch. So if you're interested, maybe in a couple of months when you know I've had some more seat time under my belt, I can do like a proper like review, like what it's been like living with the car for three months or four months or something. So um, if you're interested in something like that in the future, please let me know down in the comments. All right, let's do a little acceleration blast here, see if you can hear it. downshift, the little exhaust pops. Absolutely. Oh my God, it's so cool. All right, gang. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked the car. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I got to get moving. I got to get home, edit this video and get it up for you guys on Saturday. Hope you guys have a great day. Thanks again for watching.